Welcome to the Teutonic Takes. We're here with uh, Eric Calvillo. And hey, man, how you doing today, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well, you know, just staying out of this heat. We have some fires out here in the north. I know. Oh, yeah. Us two over here, it's like the weather is ridiculous right now. Did you guys have the training today or? No, no training. We had the day off, so it was good. Was it because it was, of the fires or? No. Um, I mean, they just gave us like uh, these past two days off just to recover. From this, like you know, week that we had, you know, of training, and then also to just uh, head into tomorrow as like a regular week of training, heading up to a game. You know what I mean? Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. How's, so, how's like your family doing during the pandemic, man? How how are you doing? Oh, uh, my family's good right now. I mean, they're all you know, obviously in LA. I'm an LA boy, so they're all there back home, you know, trying to stay safe as possible. But also, uh, my parents are both you know still working in their jobs, and you know, and my siblings are back into online school so they're they're doing well so far you know thank thank god and then myself too you know I'm, i think i'm pretty healthy right now and everything's going well and then just happy to be back you know training and hopefully start these games already yeah man so wait you said you're an la kid so you're from palmdale right yes sir palmdale <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up so you know afro men's from out there you guys yeah. you guys rock that cold 45 every time <laughs> what what a song man what yeah a song. It's, it's, a, it's a good it's a good song Hey, that's funny a funny song. That's an anthem, dude. Everybody knows yeah, it. it. Everybody knows exactly. it in California. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, no, it's it's funny. I play it from time to time and brings back memories. Do you, do you ever bring it uh, bring it up in the locker room with all the foreign dudes? Like, what the hell is this, man? Like, uh, we uh, we have before. Yeah, we have. We even did it last year. Uh, last year I brought it up, especially like even in front of like the coaching staff, so just to listen to that song and stuff. It's pretty funny. <laughs> How do you like describe California in one song? Right there. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I don't know. It, it all depends. All depends. Like you know, there's different areas. You know, different vibes and stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it, it would be a good, good like I think song to describe California. But I feel like there's better, better songs. You know, yeah. stay away from that side. No, definitely, no, definitely. So you sh- you share the same hometown of the Clippers star Paul George. Do you ever yeah, see him same. around? Do you ever see him around town, or does, is he like kind of like a hometown uh, boy? Or? Uh, I, I personally have never seen, like, seen them in person, but I've seen, you know, videos and stuff like that. We, we, when I first started high school, I went to the same high school as him because it was my local high school. So I was at P. Knight for my freshman year. Okay. And, uh, but yeah, I, I saw videos. I have friends that have met him and, like, you know, seen him in person because uh, he would go to the schools and go to the basketball program and, like, you know, give them jerseys and shoes and stuff like, you know, yeah, really nice yeah. stuff. And then he just, I think it was last year, like, during the off season, he recently just, like, uh, opened some new basketball courts at, in, in some parks, and my friends were there. So that was pretty cool, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that is – that's really sick, always giving back to the community. Yeah. We had yeah. – uh, out here in San Mateo, I think, it was, or uh, Rebel City, we had KD donate some courts. And I'm like, all right, well, you're a D.C. boy, but that's what's up. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, no. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do, too. I, you know, hopefully, in the next couple of years, I'm, I'm able to, you know, plan everything out and financial-wise. And then I'll go back home and, you know, open up my own facility and, you know, some stores and stuff like that. Yeah, man, that's what's up, man. Uh, are you look like, are you looking to do some some philanthropy, you know, like make some courts or some fields yeah, out there? Yeah, well, fields. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I am, actually. I'm trying to make, like, you know, some – obviously, there's a, there's some fields there, you know, grass-wise. I feel like it's, it's a good place to, you know, have, but it's about, you know, having people to take care of it as much. Yeah. So, if not, then maybe a little turf fields here and there because there isn't a lot of turf fields at all there either i'm pretty sure so even turf fields there like a couple like fields there and then also maybe an indoor facility That'd where cool. like people could just come in yeah like for after school programs stuff like yeah. that. and then and then even like my own stores obviously clothing brands and stuff like that but uh but yeah i'm starting off slow you know i want to start yeah. my own i got camps and stuff like that you know yeah what well, you have your own clothing line uh no i've been thinking oh. about it though like that's I, what's I, up. I wrote, in, I wrote, wrote ideas here and there logos and just trying to figure out, you know, every little piece and piece. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. That, it, I can't wait to see it, you know? Thank you. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so, you're a Lakers fan. Last night, let's talk about it. What happened? 
to be honest, uh, I didn't even get to watch the game. Uh, what? We had a, we had a, I, I watched the first half and we were, we were doing well. We came back from a, you know, they were up by a big, big leader. So, and we came back and after that, like literally like after halftime, we had a power outage. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah. I had no power. I had no service whatsoever on my phone either. Like for some reason I couldn't even watch the game. And by the time, like, uh, it came back on, obviously the game was over and First yeah. thing I checked was the score, and we lost by seven. I was like, oh, man. Uh, no, it, it, at, at the end, LeBron shoots a three, and it just comes short, and then they just gave up. And I was like, what? what's going on? It's, it's tough. It, it was, you know, I, obviously I was a little worried getting the Blazers because they're, they're a great team, right. and they're a great team. But, uh, yeah, it's, obviously I, I feel like it's, a, you know, it's just the first game, and now they know, like, you know, they got to step it up, you know, a little bit more. You know, it's the playoffs now, no matter where they're playing at, like, right. Obviously, this bubble is, you know, has a different mindset to the, to their their yeah. playoffs. But but at the same time, it's like it's a it's a job. It's a bit, you know, they're fighting for a ring, fighting for a championship. So hopefully, yeah. they, you know, I think they'll come back stronger tomorrow. Tomorrow, definitely. Um, I'm a Warriors fan, so whatever yeah. I see like Dame out there and see Jim Collum, it's like oh, it's like the Kirkland Warriors, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's like the off brand Warriors. They're, they're they're a great duo. They're a great duo, man. They're something All special. Right. Yeah, well, let's see. I, I mean, I think they'll pull it out. I don't think – I think it's just a setback. But when Avery Bradley and Ron, Rondo, like, they, they didn't come or they yeah. got hurt, yeah, it's kind of hard. It's going to be hard to, to guard the game. Yeah, yeah, no, Avery Bradley was, like, a big big loss for us, you know, especially – I mean, obviously, his family is the first kind right. of, you know, first concern and stuff like that. But, uh, but, yeah, it was a big loss. And then Rondo getting injured as well. But uh, pretty sure he's, he's making his way back. Hopefully, you know, in these next couple games, you'll probably see him in. All right, we'll we'll see how that series plays out. Let's talk a little soccer now. Um, we were talking about the Orlando bubble earlier. Earlier, um, mm. they, did you get even to go to Disney World at all? Did you did you hang no. out with anybody? Like, what'd you do, man? Dude, it was honestly a really really boring, just because obviously we try to stay as safe as possible. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't. We weren't trying to risk anything. We we just hung out between ourselves and stuff like that, because like the bubble was like really, it was it was well like you know organized and stuff like that. We all each team had their own floor, so oh, wow. they had like three three rooms that were like our team lounge with like video games, poker yeah. room, ping pong, and stuff like that. So mainly just you know spend my time there, you know, with the guys, or in my room just watching you know TV shows and movies. What uh what resort were you guys in? Do you remember? The, like the, uh, Disney, the Disney World Resort. What was it called? Well, we I know the hotel was uh Swan the Swan. Oh, the Dolphin Swan. Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that was really nice. It was really nice there. That's cool. So we had they had some activities outside as well, like hacky sack, ping pong as well. They had a what do you call it? I think they had like a pool table, but a soccer version. Oh, that's which is cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. And then the and then the little like uh, soccer tennis like oh, the yeah. table, you know, you know, the little round. That's the cool. Jillian's really yeah, they had those too. So it was nice. So you weren't able to like interact with any other team, just your team. I mean, we were, but we were, like, at the same time, especially in the beginning with all the cases, we were trying right. to stay away from everybody as much as possible and just focus on ourselves, you know. Did you guys but, uh, mm -hmm. well, sorry. Did you guys have a scare at all? Like, uh, No, not really. I, we were, I feel like we were, like, we were the first ones there, and, you know, we continued to stay safe and focus on ourselves that we didn't really have to worry about any, anything else. And then we kept coming back testing negative, so that was, like, the, you know, key for us. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I would see, you know, players, you know, from time to time that I knew or coaching, coaching staffs and stuff like that. Uh, and just, to, and just say hi quick, you know, nothing, nothing serious, talk a little bit, but uh, just still at, at the same time, keep our distance. Yeah, definitely. I, it was, it was crazy. I can't believe you guys pulled off that tournament. It was, it was a fun run. It really was, especially being there. I mean, you probably were hyped that you were even playing soccer. Yeah, no, it was good. It was really fun to be back, you know, Obviously, the conditions with weather and stuff was obviously a bit different, but at the same time, you know, it was, it was such a long time just being away and, you know, not playing again and then coming back and having that opportunity to play this type of, you know, tournament, you know, and the way it was set up was like, uh, was interesting. It was like, it was like, for me, it was like being back as a kid, you know, right. playing these tournaments and stuff like that and, you know, fighting for a, another, like a championship in a certain amount of days, you know. Yeah, definitely um so yeah how was it playing with no fans i mean like you guys kind of just matias was yelling out there all the time i mean all your, all your everybody was yelling so i mean it kind of felt like there was some intensity but there was no fans how did that feel 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, I don't think the – the no fans really had a big impact on ourselves. Like, we obviously focused on our, our game, you know, our tactics and stuff like that. And just, you know, Matias had a lot of, you know, great words to say upon going to the tournament about, you know, this is – we're not just going here just to come here because they want us to. Like, now nah, we're going to come here. We're going to come here to win a champion, a championship. You know, we're going to come here and win a trophy. That's that's what this is all about. You know, obviously, at the end of the day, it is, it is our job and it is a business. But as a as a professional, you that's all you want to do. You want to compete. You want to win trophies. And, you know, it was well said. And I think that crossed our minds, you know, the whole, the whole tournament. And, you know, we try to do that every day and, you know, in every game. Yeah, you talked about a little bit. You felt like a kid. Uh, playing soccer, you know, wanting to win a tournament in a certain amount of days. What, like, what was your, what was your team growing up? I mean, what was, what was your club? What leagues did you follow? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I played most of my my youth career with a uh, Real Sol Cal. Okay. Up in, Thousand, up in Thousand Oaks. Yeah, I played there. You know, club and an academy. And then, but yeah, and then teams growing up. I mean, I still follow my favorite team is Barcelona, but I didn't want to talk about them either. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like that's a that's a dream dream team for me right there to be able to play for it. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Anywhere in Europe, honestly, would be great. You know, I'm just, that's that's the dream right now. Trying to make it there. That's awesome, man. So, do you have a preference on league in, in Europe? Do you rather play in Spain or England? Somewhere that's a little more physical. Somewhere it's a little less physical. I mean, yeah, I, mean, I don't. I I wouldn't mind either either of those leagues. Obviously, I want to play in the top leagues with the top teams and stuff right. like that. But uh. But yeah, I think uh, Spain would be a great place for me, or or Germany. You know, Bundesliga would be nice. Um, maybe Italy as well. I'm not yeah. sure. I mean, I I mean the Premier League. I feel like that's a little more you know faster pace. Not yeah. really a lot of more technical wise like playing. And I, I'm I'm I think I'm more you know more technical wise of you know, trying to you know play and you know keep possession and stuff like that. Not just going back and forth. Yeah, but uh, but maybe you know, maybe <laughs> my game changes and I could be looking into that. You yeah. will, you will. Who knows? Who knows? Right? You only you're young, man. You're 22. Like <laughs> I know, I know. But we'll see, we'll see. I'm trying to just focus on here right now. I'm trying to get more minutes and playing here. That's what's up. Is there is there certain things, certain aspects of your skills that you're working on, or is there anything that you're really trying to hone down? Yeah, I mean, uh, right now it's a like a lot, a lot of what they're doing with the uh, you know. When I'm receiving the ball, is to continue to, you know, turn facing forward and not always facing towards my goal. That's one of my biggest issues and stuff. And then also looking over my shoulder, so I'm able to, you know, know when to turn and when not to. Uh, those are I feel like those are two of my biggest, you know, aspects where I need to work on even more and continue to work on because you know obviously those will help in the long run. But uh, but yeah, it's it's just so hard sometimes though to even like think about that in the moment when right. when I'm just trying to just be, get on the ball and just play as well. But uh, I think that's where, you know, you you put yourself ahead of others or or others put, your, put themselves ahead of, of me because they're doing those little things. So, you know, I, I'm working on that a little more and more and then also being quicker with the ball dribbling-wise, you know, yeah. trying to have, you know, boost my acceleration. Have you seen yourself grow in those aspects? I mean, have you seen yourself from your stint at the Cosmos then to now kind of grow as a player? I I have yeah I do I, I feel like I I've grown you know from my first year as a professional in New York to now, and uh and yeah and even like even my confidence wise now even with you know playing different positions but at the same time you know just being me and uh and yeah I think my confidence as well has you know improved a little more and more and it got got in you know better but uh at the end of the day it's still about you know getting those minutes but uh, so we'll see we'll see what happens. Definitely. You played for Gio Savarez during your stint at the Cosmos. How was he any different or how was he different from Matias? How was yeah. Gio's intensity and relative to Matias's? To be honest, his intensity is literally, like, I mean, they're not identical, but they're really similar. Mm. You know, they're both, they're both, you know, competitive, you know, coaches and they both were competitive players as well. And I think they both know what they, what they want and how, to go out and perform how the, to, you know, the tactics wise. And they're both winners, you know, they both, uh, they both really are emotional with, for the game, which is great, you know? So I think those two, like those, those things right there is like a very similar, you know, attributes that they have for, you know, providing to their players and stuff like that and to the club. And, and, uh, but yeah, Gio, Gio was a great, great, uh, great coach. He really helped me a lot. 
he talked to me a lot and uh, he gave me my opportunities, you know, when I felt like I deserved them. So I'm very thankful for him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in this in this spot right now, you know, because, uh, you know, my second year there, I played more and he gave me my opportunities to, you know, to start and continue growing. And, you know, it paid off that it brought me to, you know, to the MLS, which was a level up. And even for him, you know, I'm very happy that, you know, his team won and stuff like that. Obviously, I wish it was us because just watching them celebrate, you know, it, it, it it didn't hurt, but at the same time, it was like, bro, I, I, I know I want that again. You know, I, I need that. And, uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm very, you know, grateful for him and, you know, everything he's done. And also for my Tias right now, just so, you know, I'm just trying to continue to work as hard as possible for him, for, you know, to prove to him that I could be playing even more and more. Yeah, it, it, I, I was waiting for, you know, to be like Portland the earthquakes in the final. I wanted to see that storyline, you know, maybe yeah, they throw you on there and score the winning goal. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's a uh, that's something right there. I know we we my first year and his first year we played we had a scrimmage in preseason against each other. Oh, okay. And we're, yeah, he joked around with me a little bit. He's, you know, I saw him and like the goal the goalkeeper coach and the assistant coach. I both know him. So Memo and like Carlos, I work with them. They were with me my first year too. And uh, yeah, we're joking around. You know, when I got subbed in and everything, not to score on them and shit. But uh, but yeah, they're they're. Uh, they're great, great, great guys. Great, great human beings. Yeah, I mean, how was playing in New York? You, uh, you played for the same team that Pelé played for. How was that? How was that like telling your family that hey, I'm gonna go play for the Cosmos? You know, like how was that? It was, it was amazing, man. I really, I really loved it there. You know, it was, uh, it was fun. I, the, the team, my teammates were great. My first year, we had a, you know, we had a great, great year. You know, first year we won it all and everything. We had a really, really well well all around team and uh and then yeah i mean even even the fans the fans they were amazing you know they were really supportive and you know it was unbelievable there and uh and yeah just living there i mean it was new york you know i was outside of the city so which was great i didn't want to be you know living in a yeah. crowded crowded that's a crowded <laughs> place you know but uh but yeah uh the soccer wise i think the league itself was was a big shock to me i you know it was real 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 quality level for me and mm -hmm. uh and yeah i mean i think uh just my time in new york really helped me out you know to just be the person i am today you know yeah that, that brand the cosmos brand is huge i mean did you ever see yeah. people wear, wearing kits or wearing any like just jackets outside when you were walking around oh yeah i have yeah, yeah. i have it was, it was funny even too like uh i used to watch impractical jokers a lot and i noticed <laughs> that Q w would wear some Cosmos gear sometimes. I was like, well, that's, that's crazy, you know? <laughs> right. No, it's funny. You see music videos and you see some dude like yeah. rocking Cosmos, like track suit. And you're like, what? Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So you, in, when you were in, on the Quakes I, um, in 2018, when you came on as a sub for against Man United, how did, walk me through that. How did that make you feel? What was your emotions during that moment? Oh, I, I was extremely excited, you know, like who gets, who gets to say they played against Manchester United, you know, uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was real, real, real fun. Obviously I was nervous for in the beginning, but once I got in and started touching the ball, like, like any game, uh, yeah, I was, I was fine again, but it, it was real nice just the stadium wise itself. And like, like I said, you know, playing against, you know, these top, you know, these top European players and stuff like that and this top club. You know, it was, uh, it was really, really, uh, really, you know, thankful and grateful you know, to have the opportunity. In the minutes you played, what player kind of shocked you? What were you not expecting from a Man United team? I wasn't even thinking about them, to be honest. I was trying to think of myself because I was, for me, I was thinking about, you know, trying to do something, you know, that caught their eyes. So yeah. hopefully, you know, maybe they're like, hey, come through. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it was just fun just to be out there and stuff. That's awesome. Um, we're going to move on to the questions from our fans now. Uh, we have a couple of questions that were asked on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So the right. first one, it's from Facebook. It's Kevin Portillo. And he asks, I think we kind of went over this a little bit, but it's where would you like to play after the Quakes? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like I said, uh, obviously Barcelona is my, my dream team and stuff like that. I, think, I feel like, I mean, my whole life really, especially when I, when I joined the national team, they were like our top, you know, like, well, how do you, how would you say it? Like, there, there are, yeah, no, not dream, but like co our, our, my coaching staff and everything, like everything oh. that we did training wise to play was from their system. You know, they got it from them. They wanted us to play like them 
oh, and the wow. system was like them. Yeah, it was so it was like that type of soccer was like for me. I grew up with my whole life, so it was something I was so comfortable with and that I loved that I was like, all oh, right, this this for me, this, I feel like this is the team I I need to play for, you know. Yeah. But uh, but but yeah, you know, they they're always gonna be my team, my number one team, and hopefully, you know, God God you know wants, <laughs> I'll make it there and start playing there. That's what's up. Um, how did you transition? I know you went down to Reno and then you kind of played some minutes there. How was the transition from Matias' system to Ian Russell's system? Was it like seamless? Did it feel like a different type of coach? How did it feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the first year and stuff, especially like, uh, well, be uh, the, yeah, last year when Matias first came, it was a little bit different. Obviously, Matias had, had his own system and then Ian was playing his own system. So, Training wise, you know, I was trying to, you know, learn and continue to, you know, get better with Matias and his system and then going down to Reno right away. And then obviously I played with him the first year, so I had a more of an idea. But uh, but at the same time, it's like training with, with the Quakes here with a di different system and then flying down for the games with Reno it was like, all right, you know, it was a bit different and I had to, you know, catch up a little more and more. But uh, But then like towards the end of the year, they started, Ian started, uh, you know, try to, you know, do the same as Matias, but in his own way, kind of, which was still, you know, was still working for us. Right. That uh, it helped even more for, you know, the players that would, would go down to Reno from, from the Quakes. Right. Yeah. Um, you guys got off to a hard start this year. How do you feel like you guys are going to fare through the rest of the season? Are we planning to win every game or is it more of like uh, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to get to the playoffs and then kind of see where we get then. No, I feel like obviously, you know, the beginning of the beginning of this year, year with the season and stuff. Yeah. We had a, we had a struggle the first game and then the second game you know, was a tie, but uh, I think, you know, when we came into the bubble and stuff and the first three games really, you know, motivated us even more and how far we got. So I feel like even now, you know, with these games coming up, it's about, you know, taking each game, by you know, one by one, and uh, and we know that we're going to be playing against you know, one of the, these top teams in the leagues. So it's just about going out there and continue to do what we've done in the past and what we just, you know, recently done. And just to bring it out to these next couple of games and, you know, just focus on those right now. All right. Let's move on to the next question from our fans. Um, so Hella underscore SJ from Twitter asks, do you pay attention to any of the transfer news on social media? Or how do you prepare yourself for a transfer window if – you know somebody is possibly out the door. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really pay attention to the transfer windows. Not really. I'll see little, little rumors here and there, or or just or if something does, like my Tweety going to enter, mm -hmm. uh, just stuff like that, like big stuff. Like if it pops up, then yeah, I'll see it. But I don't really like go looking for you know transfer windows, like media, and seeing what's going on really. Uh, just focus on myself and you know and and what what I'm trying to do for, you know for my for my season and this, and this year and and yeah I mean if things happen like it happens like it and if it's something to do with somebody else it's like none of my business so if, you know whatever happens there it's like yeah I'm not too worried about it yeah have you ever have been homies with somebody and then they kind of like oh bro I gotta go that must have like in your professional career uh no, nah, not not really. I mean, I was. I mean, I, I was like the one basically when I yeah, like leaving, go, leaving, yeah, yeah leaving, <laughs> leaving New York and stuff. I didn't. It it was tough because I didn't uh, get to like really tell any of the guys because it was like during the off season. It was during our. It was during the off season and stuff. And uh, so yeah, I had a you know had all my close friends and you know talked to them on the phone mm. from the team and uh, just tell them yeah you know after after the news broke out you know, they gave me a call and a, and a text and stuff like that. But, but, uh, but now nah, so far, like there wasn't, it, there hasn't been anybody really. I mean, Jefferson, when he left, obviously I knew yeah. he was leaving and Cummings, I was close to both of them and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, not, not, I wouldn't say like anybody like that would, I've been really close to yet. Like actually, mm -hmm. actually Kevin Partido, I forgot. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I still see him. I talk to him. I see him when I go to Reno, You're right. but, uh, but him, yeah. Leaving, going to Reno not being able to stay here with me in the Quakes and like living together you know we lived together you know since since we got here to the Quakes mm. so he was yeah, he was a he's, a he's a big friend of mine you know he's like a brother to me and uh 
You know, I've been watching all their games and stuff and the way they're playing and they're getting the results and they're playing well. So happy for them and stuff like that, happy for him. That's why I've like been trying to see, you know, just look, watching them play. I'm like, oh, man, I missed that. Yeah, you no, know, definitely. Yeah, they, they didn't lose before the pandemic at all. So it's like they're, they're on well, a hot we, streak. We played, we played one game. We played, I was there for the first game. And we, we played in Tacoma and we won 3-1. So yeah. after, and after that, that's when everything went to. All right. Yeah. Everything went into lockdown. But, yeah, yeah I mean, you're 1-0, oh, you're undefeated, right? <laughs> but they, I, play, I, they started I, playing games now. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next question is the Marin Quake from Twitter asks, what do you think your role could be as the season progresses? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like right now, you know, obviously I'm still trying to, you know, get the minutes that I uh, I want. And but at the same time, it's like everybody has their own role, even if it's not a starter, it's still being, you know, a supportive teammate mm -hmm. and still continue to work. And, and uh, I feel like that right now, that's, that's the role that uh, I guess I have, you know, um, I'm trying to work still to be, to be in that starting lineup or even coming off the bench and being an option. But at the same time, it's just, you know, not being that guy to bring in negative vibes, you know, just because I'm not getting what I want. Right. But uh, so, yeah, I feel like that that's, that's one of the biggest roles right there is, you know, to continue being positive and, you know, not, not so negative that it, you know, brings the team down and starts right. separating everybody. So you speak a little bit of Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Yeah. So do you, do you talk to Matias in Spanish or do you, do you try to talk to the interpreter and then he goes to them or? No, nah, no. Nah, uh, yeah, when I when I speak to the coaching staff, it's always in Spanish. I speak to Matias in Spanish. Uh, he speaks, you know, obviously, he speaks to me in Spanish. But uh, but yeah, there's moments though. It's pretty funny. There's moments where it's because uh, the interpreter. I don't think like he pays attention because he's so used to like whatever Matias says, he translates. Yeah. So so sometimes when like Matias is talking to me, he starts translating to me, and I'm and I'm like, I got it, bro. Like, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm just so sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm like, yeah. You know, but, it's funny. Uh, yeah, it's, it's go ahead, funny. go ahead. So it was funny watching watching MLS's back tournament since there's no fans, right? You can hear him just like when Matias yells, then he yells right after him, and it's yeah. like, oh man, that must be a really hard job. It is. I feel like it is, man. I, I I give him like all the props in the world. Like if you really like pay attention to him, like Matias is speaking, and sometimes he forgets to stop. For him to let him translate, and then he has to like memorize almost everything he said, or try to you know get into like you know little sorts in here or there. Okay. And he does, yeah, he does, he does very well. It's it's pretty impressive. The funniest, I'll, for, I'll forget it, you know. Yeah, the funniest thing I, I think I watched the interview with Matias. He like forgot to stop talking, so it was like, oh man, this guy's going on for a minute. And then and then the translator, uh, do you know his name? Agustin. Agustin. Okay, Agustin. Agustin. Shout out uh, yeah. to my boy Agustin. <laughs> shout out, shout out. The hardest <laughs> job in the Bay right there. Oh, yeah, it is. It is, uh, bro. But it honest. was funny. Yeah, he got everything on the dot. And I was like, damn, that's a good translator. Do you think he's got coaching in him? I mean, he, he repeats everything. <laughs> maybe, man, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, he's, he's, he does, he does a, a, a great job. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Again, props to Agustin. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so – I have from Matt three Leo from Twitter. He asks, where do you see yourself, I guess, fitting into Matias' system? Um, what do you like most with working with him? And where, uh, where have you seen your game improve? I think we kind of went over that a little bit, but I guess we can go with where do you see yourself fitting into the system? If there's any new positions you possibly can do, or if, um, what do you like working about with him? Yeah. I mean, right now, like, obviously like I've, I've moved around, you know, a little more and more, you know, I've been uh, obviously he he knows that I played I could play out wide as a winger at the same time, but in in his system it's a little different than you know from my previous years, but uh but so yeah so there's times where I'm I'm out 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 wide as well but obviously at the same time he knows my strengths are in the midfield, so um, I've been playing more and more there more as an like an, an attacking midfielder either as an eight or a ten. But uh, but there has been moments as well where I've played holding midfield, depending on our number situation and like injuries and stuff like that. But but yeah, I mean I, honestly, anywhere anywhere really where I feel like I could I can make an impact is where I would want to play. But obviously, I feel like I make my biggest impact in the midfield, anywhere like in, straight in the middle. So I think, and I'm pretty sure he he knows that he agrees with me and he tells me that. So 
you know, any, I think at this time, you know, depending on, you know, any situation, you know, uh, I would be making my way more into the midfield than anywhere else. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you said right just then you could kind of play the 10 role a little bit. Is that what you played the eight, the eight though in Cosmos, right? Or did you play the 10? No, in Cosmos, that's what I was trying to say. I was um, like that previous years I played out wide and that was the Cosmos. Oh. We played we play like a 4-4-2 four, four, flat. Mm. So I was playing as a right winger, but I, I was coming into the midfield like a lot, you know? Yeah. So that's why, yeah, I would, I would like stay how- out wide. How Vaco never stays out wide, he just goes to the Yeah, middle. so like, I, exactly like Vaco, like Vaco yeah. likes going inside a lot. So that was like that was me, you know. I was I wasn't comfortable like to stay at the line and wait for the ball. Like now nah, I wanted to go inside the middle right. and try to find it again, you know. Try to like juke three people and get that nice highlight reel going. Yeah, sure. I don't, <laughs> not like not like Vaco though. Vaco <laughs> something special. Vaco cuts and cuts. Yeah, it just just scores bangers and then oh look, there's Vaco on, on top ten. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And I guess what is your, what's the best thing you like about working with Matias? Is there something that really sticks out? Uh, I'm, I'm telling you like his, his intensity, you know, the way he, he approaches like a game practice, and, you know, I think his whole, his whole like lifestyle, to be honest, the way he lives his life is very inspirational because uh, obviously we have a different background where like the way, the way he was raised and, you know, he was born and the way he grew up, you know, it's completely different from mine. So hearing stuff about that, you know, it's it really like it hits me a little bit more and more. You know, obviously they had to go through a little, little, you know, more than I did probably growing up. But at the same time, you know, he uh, he really knows how to like, get people going. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, definitely uh, has that fire in him. Yeah, he has that fire that like he can like translate it to you and like probably, you know, get it where you you know you're able to you know interpret it and then also go out you know with that you know in, in the back of your head yeah even agustin has to have that fire too you know the yeah that, that's, the- that's that, in the beginning in the beginning when we first started when he first came that was like one of the things matias told him he was like just going with all his emotion and screaming and this and that trying to get us pumped up before games and then agustin was just translating and he's yeah. like no you gotta you gotta say like <laughs> me you know how the way i say it, you gotta say it like that you know, and then he'll start screaming too. And now I think he's got it down. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any is there any players that don't know a little bit of Spanish by now, or is it? No, nah, I feel like everybody everybody right. knows a little bit. Yeah, they pick up some some. E- even the everybody European knows. guys probably know Spanish because I think they learn oh, yeah. it in their in their school. Oh, oh yeah, I mean yeah, I'm pretty sure like they. I'm telling you, they if you're you're hearing it every day. Right. No matter no matter if you have a translator and stuff like that, so you're gonna pick up some things. And then they even ask questions. You know, like. Oh, what does that mean? What does this mean? You know, mm. and we'll answer it. You know, and, and they'll pick it up. I feel like. To wrap up this interview, is there any career goals that you would like to achieve before it's all in said and done? Yeah, um, career goals is just honestly getting getting a, a lot of games in. You know, trying to play as many as many games as possible. Trying to get see the field as as much as possible. That's just that's just uh, has been my goal since the beginning. You know, obviously every player wants to play. And that's going to, you know, it's going to be my goal, you know, for my whole career, just continue to be playing and making a name for myself, trying to build my legacy. Are you always going to keep the same number? Are you going to try? That's a, that's a great question. Great question. Uh, I don't know, to be honest, it all depends. It all depends on how my career goes. You know, I've always, I was always number six. And then once I turned pro, it was it went to twenty six because I got I had to keep the six next to me, and the number two was like, uh, like a family number, I guess mm. you could say. So I had twenty six, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm not sure yet. You know, it's that's always a that that is always like the top of the question for me, for myself, and even changing changing my jersey name. Oh, what well. are you gonna change it to? What are you thinking about? Uh, well, well, growing up, I've always been known as Santana. That's my, that's my middle name. And I know, you know, go, growing up and everything, and then also, like, thinking about going pro, you know, obviously my dad and myself were like, yeah, yeah, this is your name, but you're going to – but soccer-wise, you'll be known as Santana. And then mm. came came to that point where it's like nobody knows me by that, you know, only when yeah. I go back home. I go back home and I see all my friends from soccer side. They don't call me Eric. They don't call me Calvillo. They call me Santana. And except for my friends from school, they'll call me Eric and stuff like that. But anybody else, like, 
you ask them who I am, and if you don't say Santana, they'll be like, who is that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> they'll be like, yeah, they'll no be worries, like, no who's worries, that? No <laughs> we can edit <laughs> that, like, don't trip. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll be like, who's that? And, you know, who's that? But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I do that. Or even, like, just change it in, like, the team sheet or something where the commentators could be, like, saying that, you know? I could yeah. start on my last name, but – and then right there is like known as like in FIFA, it, it's yeah, like yeah, known yeah. As, but there's nothing there. So I'm like, okay, we could put that there, you know, but, uh, right. but yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But at the same time, I have to like have my family's last name, you know? Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. You talked a little about FIFA. What's your FIFA team? What, what do you go with? Uh, I've been going with, uh, who was I? I was going with a lot with Man City, to be honest. Like okay. This, this past or yeah, in the bubble. We would play and everything. I was going a lot with Man City, so they. I mean, I don't. I don't play as much as I did before, but uh, I play a lot of like Fortnite a little more now. Okay, so that's my game. Who, who's the best player? Who was the best player of the team? I mean, who? who you guys did tournaments or anything? We did one tournament, and it was a two v two. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was it was pretty short. It was only it was only like four teams <laughs> and everything. Yeah, because we we played a lot of darts. We had we had a, a lot of dart games. Yeah. yeah, I remember Wando talking about that the dart the dart games. Yeah, so who, they played a lot of more of that. Who was the best dart thrower? I mean, Danny Houston. Oh dart. yeah, <laughs> this man, this man hustled us. He would hustle us. He's just like the quiet man out there. And then all of a sudden he walks up. And he's like yeah. the best at it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it's pretty impressive. Like this man would literally just be there, and he'll be like, "Whatever you want." I was like, "Just hit one." He's like, tell me a number. Oh, okay, nine. Pop, pop, <laughs> pop. Right. Just like all of them? Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Here's Brian it's pretty Brown. impressive, like, it's pretty impressive. Mafek is loading it up. It's called Vio takes a shot, and that one is good. Eric called Vio his first goal in a Reno uniform. Hey, <laughs> what a screamer for Cavio. I think he has half a mind to knock it out, seeing Lindo Mafek on the ground. He decides to bring it back inside and then rifle one 30 out past the goalkeeper eric lopez wow what a goal hello everybody welcome to the teutonic takes i hope you liked the interview with eric calvillo or santana and i'm gonna go ahead and go over a couple of little key quick news that happened over the week again my name is favi and i'll be your host for today as ivan is out for his break so today in news we were the fourth lowest valuation for an mls club do you believe that's fair? Do you think that we should be the fourth lowest valuation? Just in quality wise, I feel like we have a lot more quality than a fourth lowest valuation. Um, Christian Espinoza, on the other hand, is great. He should be worth a lot of money because since he came from Villarreal, and he will be a lot of money. Jackson Ewell is another player that comes to mind when the valuation happened. He looks like a great player. He's going to sell for a lot of money. So I truly feel like that fourth lowest valuation is not valid. In other news, Magnus Eriksson does look like he's leaving back to his original club in Sweden. He moves back to George Garden, and unfortunately, we have an undisclosed fee. Will anybody take that position? We will find out. I believe Eric Calvillo actually has an opportunity. It's funny that we have a, an interview with him right before this happened. A lot of people are calling for Gil Gilbert Fuentes to come into that role, but it looks like... I think Eric is still going to be, or Santana is still going to be ahead on the dev chart. So we'll see who fills in that 10 role. I saw a couple of tweets out there saying that Baco can possibly move over. But again, from the Eric Calvillo interview, we found out that Eric did play on the left wing. So that, that's another option that we do have. Or again, we can go with Haji time. We still yet know. If the Quakes have any bag of tricks left over and if they're going to get anybody in the transfer. There was also a report by the Epicenter that we actually aren't going to get that many players due to travel visas and the embassy problems. Again, I think this is Jesse using the coronavirus to kind of not make any signings due to the fact that all the other teams are making signings with no problems and international signings as the Galaxy just signed another international player. In former Quakes news, Fataya Lache joins the crew alongside Andrew Tarbell. It looks like Fataya Lache's time in FC Cincinnati was cut short. It possibly can be that they're going in a different direction with the new coach. And the crew decided that they needed a little, little more beef in their midfield area. 
believe actually Fatale Lache is winning because he is going to a better crew and he joins his um, long lost crewmate in Andrew Tawbell. It's funny, the Columbus crew is becoming a Quake's wasteland after now Fatale Lache and Andrew Tawbell when Adam Yawn also joined the crew after the Quakes. And in final news, Greg Seltzer has us placing seventh in his season predictions. Do you think that's fair? I truly do think it's fair. I think since we had a strong MLS is back group stage tournament, um, we are in a place to succeed in the next six games. And then to make the playoffs, that's going to be a tall task. Um, We haven't really been in sync, especially after that Minnesota game. We'll see how this first game against Portland really makes us look. And then after that, we should be able to make a good decision if we're going to make the playoffs this year or not. Losing Magnus in the thick of things is going to be hard. Um, we're going to need a player like Eric to step up or Gilbert to step up and really fill that 10 role. Um, but that we still have to see. Again, thanks for catching up with the Tectonic Takes. My name is Favi, and I appreciate you joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the interview, and we have many more to come. Bench, thanks, well and have a great him. day. There's Cavillo on the left. Ford! Oh, it's an absolute beauty! Into that bottom corner, and it's a brace! The 19-year-old has been massive for the Cosmos, who regained their lead. They're on top of Miami by two goals to one. Oh, this is a star in the making. How about the brace from the youngster, the youngest on the pitch? And he rifles this one. It couldn't have been placed any better. Taking matters into his own hands. Going up against Richie Ryan. Finds that little sliver of space. Honestly, it's millimeters that Calvillo's able to find this tunnel. Sterikov gets out of the way, and it's good that he did.